Good evening, lords, ladies and gentlemen. Um, by your going on, sorry, just need to get behind this speaker. Um, I was asked to say a few words on how do you change lives. It's such a big question and a big responsibility when somebody asks you that. And especially when you wake up in the morning and you see the, the news about the terrorist attacks, and then you see news about Syria, and you could also easily turn the TV off, turn your face the other way and say, it's somebody else's problem, it's the government's problem, it's the police's issues, it's the corruption, or it's the uh, teacher's, or it's actually your neighbor's problem, not your problem. And we turn back into our blissful lives that we lead here in the UK, which we're very privileged to lead, I think. But, as Gandhiji did say, be the change that you want to be in the world. And what does that mean? And for me personally, I think I was the first change from my mother, for somebody who was uneducated. And when I used to go out, you are stepping outside in the world of work and you're taking my honor with you. And to this day, I hope that I've kept my mother's uh, memory alive by doing what she wanted us to do, is that she do good. But as a banker, what can you do? I'm not a doctor, I'm not a surgeon, we're not saving lives out there, we're not on the front line. But what can we do as a banker, and especially banks, apart from giving finance? But what's something I wanted to share, something we're all, if you're from a professional uh, background, something we've tried to do, and I've tried to uh, influence my organization. A few years back, I was asked to lead the bank's 250th anniversary in World's Banking Group. And I wanted to make it the greatest ever year for supporting communities. I was delighted half of my organization, 40,000 colleagues, went out there and actually did volunteering. But then I asked the question, what? What impact did we have? Yes, they dug gardens, they painted fences, and they did some you know, voluntary work, but what impact did we have? We've got over 125,000 people. They're lawyers, they're bankers, they've got knowledge, they've got skills. Why can't we use that skills to actually help the charity sector, who's actually struggling so much with all the cutbacks? I'm so proud to say, yes, there was challenges. Colleagues were saying, God, what do I know about gangs? I can't help them. And charities weren't really ready for skills volunteering. But actually helping them and helping them understand what the barriers are, when you take away and strip away the titles and just put somebody in touch with a charity or a mentorship, it really made me feel humble when I saw a charity, nearly tears in their eyes and saying, come on, your colleague managed to help me. I was about to shut my doors. They've given me an idea and I'm going to go and practice that. By simple things, now all of a sudden, 50% of our people are using their skills to actually make things happen and change. I'm so proud the Cabinet Office now listened to us. We've got three universities trying to measure the impact that it has, not just on the charities, I'm proud to say, but on my colleagues. My colleagues came back so humbled and so privileged to have helped somebody change their life that they're more enthusiastic, they're more loyal, they're working harder. And I think we've got something here that any corporate banker or any other organization can take that away and make that happen. Something simple, volunteering, help your neighbor. And for me, that might be helping my neighbors or actually looking after my mother-in-law for 35 years living with me or helping my daughter-in-laws achieve their success. Mother-in-laws have a bad reputation. I hope we can change that for our next generation. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>